Okay, so I take this immense opportunity to welcome our speaker for the day, Dr. S. K. Ramesh sir. Uh, personally, I have I have looked I always looked up to him as a role model and as an inspiration. And I'm going to also read his profile for all of us. And uh, I'm sure this show would be so much of informative, also interactive, and also inspiring. Okay, so I'll, I'll quickly read his profile, and then we we will welcome him on the stage for all of us. Yeah. SK Ramesh is a renowned engineering educator with over three decades of leadership experience as a dean, department chair, and faculty member in the California State University system. He is presently a professor of electrical and computer engineering at California State University Northridge and founding director of CSU Northridge Ames Squared program that mentors and supports underrepresented minorities in engineering. Excellencia in Education recognized it as the national program of the year 2019. Earlier, he served as Dean of CSUN's College of Engineering and Computer Science from 2006 to 17, with over 100 faculty, staff, and serving approximately 4,800 students. He established several innovative programs in assistance in assistive technology engineering, renewable energy, and advanced manufacturing to serve practicing engineers. Dr. Ramesh has been an active IEEE volunteer for 39 years and has served in several leadership roles across the institute on the board of directors, IEEE Education Activities Board, IEEE HK and Board of Governors, IEEE Publication Services and Product Board, and the IEEE Awards Board. Dr. Ramesh serves on the IEEE Fellows Committee and has served on the 2017-18 IEEE Strategic Planning Committee. He serves on the ABED Board of Directors, the Global Accrediting accrediting organization chairing the engineering delegation with the 32 societies including IEEE. Earlier he served as IEEE's representative on the ABET board of delegates. He is also an experienced program evaluator and has performed several visits in the US and internationally. ABET accredits over 4,500 programs worldwide in engineering technology, computing and applied and natural sciences. As 2016-17 Vice President of Educational Activities, he championed collaboration, diversity, and inclusive excellence through innovative programs like the IEEE Learning Network. This program continues to grow with 28 partner IEEE societies and organizational units and offers over 900 courses today to an audience of approximately 5,700 members. IEEE HKN expanded to serve all 10 regions of IEEE under his leadership as the 2016 IEEE HKN President. As a member of IEEE Region 6, he has a long area section chapter student branch levels he served his, he serves on the membership development team of IEEE Buenchora section that was one of the 27 sections recognized with the 2020 IEEE gold award for member retention and recruitment Ramesh is an IEEE fellow recognized for contributions to entrepreneurship in engineering education and his research interests cover high speed optical communication systems devices and electronic circuit design his many recognitions include the John Guerra Engineering Educator of the Year, William Johnson International Award for Leadership and Contributions to the Profession, and the IEEE Region 6 Community Service Award. He is a member of Sigma Z, having served as the president of the Sacramento chapter for several years in the 90s and past president of the Omicron chapter of Phi Beta Delta Honor Society for International Scholars. On that note, so this is the formal introduction I have planned for uh, Ramesh sir. At the same time, I also have, I also wanted to show um, all of you a picture. So this is the first time I have met Ramesh sir in person. And I never felt like I'm meeting such a huge personality for the first ever time. He was so kind. Um, so I actually mentioned the Tirukural um, uh, Katka Kasadara. And then Ramesh sir, sir was, so this is in Vancouver, Canada, right? And he was the person, he came back and asked me, he was asking. So I was super surprised to hear a Tamil voice and then I, I really got to know this wonderful personality who has been um, it was a huge inspiration. Since then, he has been a huge support for me and also a lot of people uh, across India and around the world. So I think um, I'm, I'm super happy and I'm super glad to do to, do, to host Ramesh sir on this call with us. I'm going to add him to the stage with a welcome. People on the call, you can post a welcome message. And here is Ramesh sir. Manakam sir. Manakam Aramandan. Anavarukam. Iniya Vinaya Chaturthi Valtakar. I hope everybody is doing well. Thank you for that very gracious introduction. You know, I love seeing that picture again. It was wonderful. 
<laughs> yes sir yes sir so this was from my instagram i think i posted last year it's always been a uh, memorable cherishable memory so we have we have different people joining from uh, joining on the call hi kumaran hi ramanarayan hi mitrish good evening everyone it is early morning for me you know we are uh, 12 and a half hours uh, behind you so literally you are into the future you can tell me what is going to happen <laughs> <laughs> yes sir yes sir yes sir the future is very good and uh, that's our topic for today as well um i think we will deep dive into uh, the future um so i'm going to get started with the question sir i think um, uh, i have got 30 minutes of your time i hope uh, i will be able to cover uh, all the questions that i have planned to ask you and we also have enthusiastic people on the uh, call they will also post their question so people on the call if you have a question you can தோணுதோ அப்பலாம் நீங்க கேட்கலாம் so this conversation will be in bilingual very rare opportunity um, so we can also hear amesh sir's thoughts uh, in tamil also அதுவும் ஒரு சூப்பரான opportunity சரிங்களா சரிங்க சார் i'll get started with the question with your permission please yeah yes okay so our topic for today is um, education innovation and the future um, so when i look at this two specific different things right education and innovation um i was able to make a lot of connections with your work whatever that you have done with your professional work um i'm curious about like in the both these things have evolved right over time education has evolved like innovation has evolved like how does it um how you have seen this growth because you have such a vast experience and how you see this specific to this this two of these domains also in the future like uh, ipo பாஸ்ட்ல எப்படி பாத்தீங்க இப்போ எப்படி பாக்குறீங்க ஆல்சோ ஹவ் யூ ஆர் சீயிங் இட் இன் தி ஃபியூச்சர் அஸ் வெல் தட்ஸ் மை ஃபர்ஸ்ட் क्वेश्चन தட்ஸ் a great question arvind and first of all again thank you very much to all of the wonderful uh, friends who are joining i see a lot of familiar names so thank you for taking the time to join today uh, so when we think about the world today right the grand challenges that we face whether it is uh, climate change whether it's healthcare transportation communication food security நீங்க எதை எடுத்துக்கிட்டாலும் அட் த அட் த ஃபவுண்டேஷன் ஆஃப் தட் யூ வில் ஃபைண்ட் எஜுகேஷன் ஸோ வென் யூ ஆர் ஏபிள் டு சால்வ் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் வென் யூர் ஏபிள் டு அட்ரெஸ் த ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் இட் கோஸ் டவுன் டு எஜுகேஷன் அண்ட் பை திஸ் ஐ மீன் எவ்ரி ஒன் நாட் ஜஸ்ட் இன்ஜினியரிங் அண்ட் கம்ப்யூட்டர் சயின்ஸ் ஐம் ரியலி டாக்கிங் அபவுட் இக்கானமிஸ் ஐம் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் பொலிட்டிக்கல் சயின்டிஸ் ஆர்ட்ஸ் ஹியூமனிட்டிஸ் ஆல் த டிசிப்ளின்ஸ் ஆர் ரியலி ரியலி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் பிகாஸ் அட் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் த டே ஐ ட்ரூலி பிலீவ் தட் எஜுகேஷன் ஹோல்ஸ் த கீ to solving the grand challenges that confront us and perhaps uh, it has become uh, even more relevant during the last 18 months when we have been confronted with challenges that we never experienced before you know somebody told you 18 months ago that you will be completely virtual right the whole world will be virtual you cannot travel anywhere sari adu vende or science fiction movie a irukum it will never happen in real life and so we will set it aside but it really happened and we still survived uh, you know today's conversation aravindan is a testament to that so innovation eduthitinga uh, one way of looking at innovation is you know what's new what's new right what are we doing that is new that hasn't existed before but really to me innovation is about bouncing back from adversity you know we are facing unprecedented challenges every day i mean in fact i woke up this morning as i thought at 3 o'clock in the morning i'll be watching india play the oval test right and here we are you know because of safety reasons they had to cancel the cancel test yeah. so uh, innovation is bouncing back from adversity so uh, adversity doesn't announce to you ahead of time saying oh by the way at 8 o'clock today you're going to face this challenge right the challenges come up and you have to be humble you have to understand what the uh, challenges are and then try to come up with solutions so Uh, probably the biggest thing that i can tell you uh, from my perspective you know none of us not you not me would be here without the support of our teachers our parents and the community around us right so i'm incredibly grateful i'm incredibly grateful uh, for all the lessons that i continue to learn you know and i hope that we'll explore some of that during our call today uh, from students to people around us because at the end of the day uh, you know i remember two things that my parents used to tell me be well and do good right so you know when you're growing up you say like uh, what do you mean by that so unless you're healthy you cannot do good right and now it, it it seems very profound to me because you have to take care of your health and if you're healthy then you can do good for the people around you right so to me education and innovation uh, have always been with us maybe they've risen to the top as a result of the pandemic that we're facing right now get it get it yeah i think um, 
when you look at both these things combined together now for example virtual learning uh, so much of youtube videos coming in i started doing youtube videos after the pandemic hit right so i was able to make the connection like how both these things come together and future la in sona madri you will also see that um, like both of them merging so much together and how they are going and thank you sir thank you for that uh, question so my next question is going to be purely in tamil uh, this is especially we want to we want to hear your thoughts on this right and so many people have um, this question on their mind adanal da indha question ah konjam put forward pannala young people ku seringala so so adha da ena tamil la question kekkalama people on the call tamil tamil oru siru kelvi okay um okay sir so thiruvalluvar அவருடைய திருக்குறள்ல பாத்தீங்கன்னா போர் ஹண்ட்ரட் டுவெண்ட்டி சிக்ஸ் திருக்குறள் என்ன வரதராசன் அவர்களுடைய விளக்கம் என்னன்னா உலகம் எவ்வாறு நடைபெறுகின்றதோ உலகத்தோடு பொருந்திய வகையில் தானும் அவ்வாறு நடப்பதே அறிவாகும் ஓகே சோ என்னோட கேள்வி என்னன்னா சார் உலகம் எப்படி நடக்குதோ அதுபடி நம்ம நடக்கணும் அப்படிங்கிறது ஒரு தாட்டா இருக்கு ப்ரொஃபோண்ட் தாட்டா இருக்கு திருவள்ளுவர் ரிட்டர்ன் வந்திருக்கு பட் ஆனா இப்போ நம்ம அட்டன் பண்ற நிறைய செஷன்ஸ்ல நிறைய இதுல நிறைய ஸ்பீக்கர் சொல்றது எல்லாமே ஃபாலோ யுவர் பேஷன் உங்களுக்கு ஃப்ரீடம் இருக்கிறத பண்ணுங்க டுவோர்ட்ஸ் பினான்சியல் ஃப்ரீடம் நான் நாட் ஓன்லி பினான்சியல் பட் டூ வாட் யூ லைக் கரெக்டா சோ அந்த இது இருக்கு நான் என்ன கேக்குறேன்னா உலகம் எப்படி நடக்குதோ அப்படி பண்றோம் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்றது ஒரு பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ நம்மளுக்கு பிடிச்சத பண்ணணுன்றது ஒரு பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ உங்களுடைய எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ்ல நீங்க எப்படி சார் இந்த ரெண்டு திங்ஸையும் பாத்தீங்க அண்ட் டூ திங்க் லைக் இஸ் தர் எனி இன்னும் டீப்பர் மீனிங் இருக்கா திருவள்ளுவர் சொன்னதுல இது எங்களுக்கு புரியாது ஏன்னா உலகத்தோட இருக்கிறதுனா கோயிங் வித் அப்படி தான் நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ உங்களுடைய பதில் சார் நல்ல அழகான குரல் அரவிந்த நீங்க கேட்டது நான் முடிஞ்ச அளவுக்கு நான் தமிழ் பதில் சொல்றேன் So let me start with uh, one thought. When you started, you started about education and innovation, right? And I said, innovation is not all, but bouncing back from adversity. That is, that is very important. And keeping that in mind, you know, I want to start with um, a passage from uh, the National Academy of Engineering. And this is specific to engineering, but really it's about uh, the, uh, the, the quote that you just uh, shared with me. So it says, no profession unleashes the spirit of innovation like engineering no profession connects science to life in so many forward thinking ways no profession has such a direct and positive impact on our lives we are counting on engineers and their imaginations to take us forward in the 21st century so ninga nae.edu site ku poninga and ninga padivarakam sedikalam adha it's called changing the conversation right so changing the conversation so ipo thiruvallur sonnadha ninga ipo yosichu paarenga நம்ம வந்து காலத்துக்கு தகுந்த பிறகு எப்படி அடாப்ட் செய்து ஹவ் ஆர் வி அடாப்டிங் டு த சேஞ்சஸ் அரவுண்ட் அஸ் ரைட் அண்ட் ஐ ஆல்சோ திங்க் அபவுட் வாட் ஐ லேர்ன் ஃப்ரம் மை பேரண்ட்ஸ் பி வெல் அண்ட் டூ குட் சோ இட் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஃபார் அஸ் டு பி வெல் அட் தி சேம் டைம் வி நீட் டு பி திங்கிங் அபவுட் ஹியூமனிட்டி அரவுண்ட் அஸ் சோ நீங்க எந்த கல்வி நீங்க கற்றுட்டனாலும் நீங்க யூ could be an economist you could be an arts person you could be so உங்கள சுற்றி சூழல் எல்லாம் எப்படி இருக்காங்க சமூகத்துக்கு நம்ம என்ன சேவை செய்யணும் என்ன சமூகம் இல்லாம நாம் நாம இருக்கிறதுன்னு கிடையவே கிடையாது இல்லையா ஸோ ஆசிரியர்கள் நம் நம்மோட படிக்கிற மாணவர்கள் நம்ம பெற்றோர்கள் எல்லாருமே நம்மளை வந்து தேவ் சப்போர்ட்டட் அஸ் த்ரூ அவுட் அவர் லைஃப்ஸ் ஸோ ஐ வுட் சே தட் இட் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஃபார் அஸ் டு கன்சிடர் ஹவ் வி கிவ் பேக் டு சொசைட்டி தட் இஸ் ரியலி த மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன் திங் இட் டசன்ட் மேட்டர் வாட் யூ ஸ்டடி ரைட் அட் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் த டே வென் வி லுக் பேக் you know somebody gave you the opportunity saying back to the future right nalla padam undu neenga parunga back to the future so back to the future la undu you can say okay how can i you know look back at my own story and say what difference did i make in in a small way so i would say adapting to those needs so it doesn't matter what you studied i mean take you for example arvind now modal modal when when i met you i was so inspired by your story teach for india undu when i saw you on the stage that's when i learned about teach for india then i'm learning more about teach for india i'm learning about people like janani and the project that they're doing right so it is it is truly inspiring to me that you are taking your time and giving back to society so systems thinking collaboration understanding what the needs of the people are without innovation 
uh, we are not able to deliver the products that people need, right? Whether it's medicines or even day-to-day -day necessities, right? Groceries, how do we deliver that, right? So supply chain, there are so many areas in which we can contribute. So I would say that uh, it is not about, you know, uh, I don't see these as two different things, right? Uh, following your passion is important, but follow your passion in such a way that you can see the impact in society. Sell us something on there. It will take a long time for that impact to manifest itself. Don't worry about it, right? Wongalala Mudinja is saying, whatever you can, do it for, and then the, the rewards will come in due time, right? And you, do, you definitely, most definitely don't do it for recognition, right? You do it because you care. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, and I have I have an interesting uh, story to share with you. You do it because you care. And uh, the way I look at it is my teachers, the uh, people around me, all my friends, you know, I'm still in touch with uh, classmates going back to grade school, uh, elementary school in some cases, or even uh, college. Every single person had a role in shaping who I have become, right? So that's the way I look at it. Uh, because nobody, nobody in this world can claim that they did everything themselves. Whatever you are today is a result of the community around you. And so the, the biggest uh, takeaway for me in the Kural Ninga Padicha, the Varadar Asana Rundan Nala Araya Sulir Kare, Ninga Kural Ninga Testo Chengana Nichaman, I'll fail today. And it's been a while since I read it. But I do remember a, a few things. And, uh, you know, the, this is one of the uh, couplets that I think has life's lessons that we need to give back to society. That is the most important thing that we need to think about, regardless of, you know, where you come from, regardless of who you are. And it doesn't have to do anything about your economic status. It is all in the mind, right? Uh, we have to do to help the people around us. I think it made a lot of sense, sir. In terms of, you said that we can impact the I think, yeah, it's, it would be a great message for all the people um, on the call, also for me. So thank you. Thank you for the mention about um, Teach for India and the work. I think Janani is also Janani is saying a hi. Thank you, Janani. <laughs> sir, um, zoom out, sir. Uh, audience, talk to me the questions in the post. I'm going to ask you But there are important questions, sir. Um, I think this question is about leadership. So when I actually look at leadership, initially I thought someone who leads the things and then takes up the show and do all these things, right? But leadership has evolved so much in this digital world. We are seeing um, like the managerial positions, they, they have actually changed so much. But what I see as a general um, spectrum, and if I take all the managers or leaders in a spectrum, there's always two, two things. One end of the there are people who do micromanagement, like who <laughs> put a task and like to check if the task, if each and every task is completed. Whereas on the other side, I'm seeing people giving you so much of autonomy. Okay, okay, then. so this is your task, you can do that completely. So that is always that spectrum I have seen. I've also seen people in the middle, but I personally think both the things, both the styles have their own pros and cons. Like this person could provide us feedback immediately. This person could, could help us explore more and more things. I wanted to know your, um, what is your definition of leadership? And uh, how do you see this both this spectrum? Is there any experiences that you would like to share about working with both these type of leaders? And what type, what kind of a leader you are? The spectrum in the side, let me answer I think there's a lot of questions. <laughs> so that's a question. No, that's you know, lots of interesting thoughts there, Aravind. And you know, I was listening to your question and trying to uh, comprehend it first. You know, and to me, you know, I don't consider myself. I consider myself a servant leader, a servant leader, right? By that I mean. I want to be authentic. I have to be authentic, true to myself. I have to be true to the people that I'm serving. So as long as that is in your mind, then the rest of the things follow automatically because you can never be something that you're not, right? You can go and take the best uh, management course at Wharton or you can go to the uh, top schools in India. I am in Ningapur. You can learn about management and how to lead people and so on. But at its very core, Aramindan, I think you have to be authentic. You have to be authentic to the people around you, people need to know that they can trust you, right? Uh, Stephen Covey, even though there, there's a great book, you know, uh, the, the speed of trust, uh, the speed of trust, because as long as people trust you, as long as people believe that you're authentic, in other words, you'll not just share with them the good news, you'll share with them the challenges, 
you will include them in solving those challenges, right? So regardless of whether you're working in industry, you could be in education. Authenticity is very important uh, too, in order to lead. Before you can lead, you need to be true to yourself. You need to be true to the people that you're, you're depending upon. So leading in good times is always easy, right? I mean, you have plenty of resources. Uh, you're giving good news all the time. But in real life, that doesn't happen. That never happens, right? In real life, you're confronted with challenges all the time. COVID, my university started in face-to-face -face operation two weeks ago, right? Uh, so they're telling people that you need to self-certify that you're vaccinated. So if you do not self-certify, then uh, you have to subject yourself to testing because obviously this is a question of public health and safety. So they have to check. How do you check, you know, in a campus of 40,000 uh, students, 5,000 faculty and staff, how do you go around checking? So all this, uh, they're trusting people to do the right thing. They're trusting people to provide the information. At the same time, you need to verify. So the leadership here is in empowering those around you and empowering those around you to act authentically so that every single person says, I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to myself. I have a responsibility to the people around me and then acting authentically to, uh, to move forward. So those are two important characteristics that I would say are important for leadership. The other point I'd make for you, I mean, you contrasted two different styles. You said micromanaging or delegating, right? I would suggest that the word transformation is very important, right? And this doesn't happen overnight. And uh, I'll give you my AIM squared program. AIM squared program stands for attract, inspire, mentor, and support students. Most of the students in my program are first generation students. Apina, they're the first in their family to go to college, let alone earn a degree in engineering or computer science. So engineer or they studied in this. So they have role models at home, right? They don't have any role models. They come from very humble beginnings. They're probably working in the service industry, agricultural work, but they're coming to engineering as a way for a higher education to make a difference, not only for themselves, but for their community. So the leadership here is attracting individuals like that, giving them an opportunity to fail and to succeed. Because not everything you try will be successful, right? So there are lots and lots of... Now, in, in my early days, about 30 years ago, when I was teaching a graduate course on fiber optic communications, um, obviously in communications, the goal is to send the signal from one end to the other without any loss, right? So the core of the fiber has a higher refractive index compared to the cladding. And I still remember to this day, one of the students, he was probably not the best student in the class, but the student came back many years later and he was running a very successful company. And the company in getting na. It's a company that's dealing with lighting, right? Oh, so okay. swimming pool, buildings, and the Marigala lighting. But he said one thing that I'll remember very well. He said, Dr. Ramesh, I took everything you taught me and I turned it upside down. <laughs> he said, I switched the fact that the core is a higher index. I made the core the lower index and the cladding a higher index. So what happens is the light, instead of traveling in the core of the fiber, now leaks out at every point. Basically, he took every single thing that he learned in the course uh, in a communication system. And he said, I want to create a lossy communication system. Right? Oh. So the light leaks out. Then he put you know, bells and whistles. So he added a grating to it. He added a laser to it. So colored lights, you can change the light. I'm getting, you know, oh, we have an app for that so long. <laughs> they can change the light around the pool. But the point I'm making is that you need to inspire people around you. You need to support them. You need to give them an opportunity to be successful. So that transforms the individual and the impact on the community is something that is immeasurable, right? People say education is transformative. That's what I mean. That's what I mean by leadership. And that's what I try to do. You know, I don't consider myself a particularly good leader. I just learn from the students around me. I learn from the faculty around me. They're the ones who have taught me. And we need to be humble enough at all times, at all times, to let people know that we don't have all the answers. We collectively have the answers. Uh, because the power of community is so powerful. In other words, organizations like IEEE are so powerful, right? Advancing technology for humanity. But we need to be humble enough to say that, hey, the brain initiative there, quantum initiative is there, blockchain, rebooting, computing, whatever it is we take. We have people around the world who are coming together, putting their minds together, brilliant minds coming together to solve the problems around them. So leadership to me, in one word, is being authentic, taking responsibility, and being humble enough to accept that we don't have all the answers. The community has the answers. That's that's very true, sir. I think that's a I think that's a very 
holistic way of looking at leadership and also a beautiful definition when you said we should be humble enough and then continue learning right so leadership and learning goes always hand in hand you also mentioned a very interesting point about not everything you do will be successful right and here's a question i think uh, janani has posted so this i'll, I'll read out the question in your experience you would have many bright spots at the same time you would have had a downfall where everything seems to be against you what made you to move on with that same inspiring spirit to add on to to add on to this question what made you to continue to be very successful um like uh, even after the downfall because also when i think about failures i always remember it always right or kuti kuti even if a small thing that could trigger you to think more about the failures that we are doing that could have happened uh, so yeah your thoughts sir great question janani and again i'll go back you know as an engineering educator a lot of my stories revolve around uh, students right so uh, as you're teaching students uh, obviously you're teaching them technical uh, fields and so forth but you need to look at the individual uh, themselves where they're coming from what challenges they're facing and so forth so in our system uh, the system that i teach it's a public university system california state university in like nayar panadi you can see or angela chamber can 500000 students and every year we graduate about 100000 students and the students come from very diverse backgrounds uh, so the way we are funded in the university system we are funded based on enrollment and at the same time the state doesn't have infinite resources right as a public university system uh, tuition and so forth pay for the university to educate all these students so when i started as dean uh, we started uh, reaching out to a lot of colleges community college system like so we reached out to a lot of colleges to attract students who finish the first two years in the community college and then they come to the four year college then the state of california this year we have a surplus but the state of california back in about 10 years back they had a huge economic downturn right with uh, dot com and everything there was a huge downturn so when that happened we were told you have to manage somehow you have to manage somehow you have to educate the students you have but your budget is fixed your budget is not going to be increased so now this is an interesting problem right this is a very interesting problem and this is where the power of community came in right so a lot of my uh, colleagues were looking at it saying okay uh, if the budget is cut then we have to cut classes vera vali illa right so we have to pay salaries we have to cut classes which means the time for graduation is going to be delayed for students but the reason why i think we were able to be successful in the long term is because we had relationships with these community colleges so for four year program at the thing na first two years you'll be doing math physics chemistry uh, engineering science and then maybe you'll be doing your upper division courses uh, engineering design and so forth in the upper division so with the transfer system that we had in place the students can actually take these initial classes at the community college so we worked out a system which you know these days you'll call it a reverse transfer and even though you're in the four year university you go back to the two year college to take the missing class because it's not like everybody is taking the classes in the same sequence so that's how we managed so you you took that adversity we talked about innovation earlier uh, innovating in the face of adversity uh, i truly believe is a definition of resilience right so and lots of other things you know in my personal life not everything that i've tried has been successful uh, i've not got an a in every single class i've got c's in classes and i've looked at it in graduate school and said oh my goodness you know what am i going to do but the one thing that i always go back to is what my parents told me be well and do good right so as long as you're healthy you have good habits uh, you 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 go back and look at what you failed in right what are those areas that you failed in because truly engineering when you go to a conference when you go to any major event uh, people present their results they present the work that they did and they present the results you don't have 3 hours for them to describe all the dead ends they went to right there are so many things they tried that probably did not work out and there's a lot to be learned from that you know a lot to be learned from that uh, you know we think about uh, space flight i mean right now people are pushing that saying can we have space travel for humans autonomous cars you know varsha the minadi who would have thought about autonomous cars right so be humble you know be brave don't be afraid to fail because that i think is the only way to be successful and you will continue to face these i mean on a day to day basis uh, the internet failed randwarthi munadi my internet just went down okay and this is a simple problem i have a cable modem so somebody was doing some construction work down the street they cut the cable that's it so how do you manage without the internet you do right you do 
How do you manage without PowerPoint? You do. <laughs> so you try, you try, and you succeed. So thank you, Janani. Great question. I don't know you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, you <laughs> also happening. <laughs> I thought I should never do that and then it finally happened. Okay. Uh, so thank you for uh, sharing that. I think now I'm getting there. So I'm really saying Okay. So, yes, sir. So what is a little bit of personal question, sir? Um, when it comes to, also it's time. You can we extend it to some five minutes, sir? Is that okay for you? Take, take as long as you want, Aravind. This is a great conversation. <laughs> We can go for as long as you want, as long as the audience is willing to tolerate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to come up with all the questions from my mind and then put it forth uh, here. So when it comes to hobbies, okay, this is this is like uh, this is like a question that I always have in mind. Um, uh, when you are in childhood, you are always thought like uh, stamp collection, uh, coin collection, um, all those things. I think at least. வாட்சிங் சம் மூவிஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் ipo on the ott platforms there so many ott platforms and we are seeing uh, brand new content right every week and all these things when i look at hobbies um i am spending my time but these are more towards entertainment uh, so what my question to you is what 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 is your hobbies and how has it evolved over time and do you have any suggestions uh, for me also for the people attending the call to make it a little bit more creative or do you think we should need that downtime to get the energies what is your um, idea around that yeah interesting question uh, around them because one view of this is that you should detach from what you're doing and enjoy what you're doing right so uh, and it changes over time and by the way you know uh, even in our time we did stamp collection and all of those things right but perhaps one of the things that has disappeared the way of the dinosaurs is the so called lending library if i learn anything right oh yes yes yeah 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 So, there are like this uh, uh, but yeah but ipo vand after i think in the digital era la vand it has come down yeah yeah right and and you can access everything online but there is something to be said about walking up to your uh, neighborhood uh, bookstore and picking up that book ipo uh, more market e kedaiyadu but at the time when i grew up in chennai uh, i used to love going to more market on the perimeter of more market you had all these old bookshops right and you could walk around that and uh, you could just be browsing for forever you don't need to buy anything nobody will come and ask you sir ungale eda vanuma nobody will ask you anything you can just browse all you want but then what i found is the people are so knowledgeable right you go there and ask them something and you'll pull it out in no no time i have no idea how they're so organized because to me it just looks like a pile of books okay it's a pile of books on the shelf but you go tell them you know enakku and the dr kalamoda book agni charayal irukan it over it sir top nil will give it to you right so the, i have no idea how they do that but to me books is something that i grew up with okay and so i'm going to date myself here so i went to school uh, 70s 80s so radio is big television was just coming out you know doordarshan was just coming out in uh, 77 78 at that time so books was a big deal and so reading i think really expanded my mind and then listening to radio that's a very different experience and uh, uh, you you have somebody else describing something that they may be seeing in person or they're describing to you their version of what they've read right if a podcast and children number so uh, in the same way they're describing that to you so those are two things that i really carry to this day i mean i still like my books okay so if you haven't read this but it's barnga and i was very uh, proud to meet kalam sir you know in, in person so uh, uh, he was kind enough to autograph this for me and said nalwarthikal ramesh jolly and he was talking to me about education in india and how we can uh, improve education so forth so books is very important to me and i'm old fashioned you know even to this day i pick up the newspaper i like to read the newspaper with a cup of coffee or uh, something uh, whenever i find time uh, sports is really really critical right and uh, although i don't play any competitive sports or anything when i was growing up i did you know i played the usual games like all of you i played table tennis uh, 
you know, at the intramural level, I played cricket and so forth. Those are things that I enjoy. Now I enjoy it as a spectator. And I enjoy watching my children play. I enjoy watching them play. They don't play cricket. They play baseball and soccer. But that, you know, the, the, the point of it is you need to be engaged, right? You need to be engaged. And you need to have something that allows you to get out of the day-to-day -day things that you're doing so that it inspires you. It gives you creativity. Uh, you think about a football game. You, know, you still call it football. You get soccer and so on. You call it a football game. You know, how many players does it take, right? What kind of coordination does it take to uh, to win the game? If I go to, uh, I'm, you know, I find it very funny uh, because Ramesh has become my last name here, right? So my my boys, when they're growing up, you know, on the back of their jersey, it'll say Ramesh. So and my older son played uh, midfielder in soccer. So the coach will suddenly say Ramesh, get on him. So in the moment he says that, guess who jumps up off the stands? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's my name. But then I'm realizing that he's talking to Arvind, my son, right? By the way, his name is also Arvind, like you. So, so I'd say, um, you know, hobbies are something that uh, you need to have uh, to, to keep your balance, right? Balance is really important. Uh, these days, you know, we can't really go to large events and so on. So we love taking walks. My wife and I go on walks. And every evening, you know, it gets very warm here in LA. It gets to about 100 now, right now. So we look at the air quality and we go out a little bit later, around 7 o'clock in the evening or so. And I've got some glorious sunsets, glorious, glorious sunsets, right? Uh, and early morning, you know, Nick, I got up a little early, uh, early morning catching sunrises. These are small things. You know, we were taking this for granted uh, before the pandemic. But now when I look at it, I say how blessed we are, how blessed we are to be here, right? So, uh, you know, continue to do what you like. Uh, enjoy what you do, and uh, don't be afraid to try new things, right? Don't be afraid to try new things. So my, right. my younger son has uh, set up a, a gym at home. So he says, you guys are spending too much time in front of the computer, so you need to work out. So that's become part of a routine now. So. Oh, okay. It's interesting, sir. I think um, the way you put it around um, trying new things and then figuring out how uh, how much you like also the going back to the reading habit i have personally um, also read the agni book so much of inspiration so much of learnings and uh, i also wanted to show this picture to all the people i'm sure you would have seen this on uh, amesh's instagram profile uh, which he shared very recently i took it as an inspiration and here's the pic i hope you can see this yes this is the picture I wanted to show to everyone. Uh, so how was it, sir? Every did sir? It was amazing. And it was October of 2009. And literally, that book was signed by uh, President Kalam on that day. And he walked in. I had the book in my hand. I had just returned from Chennai. I had the book in my hand. And he literally walked up to me and he started talking to me in Tamil. Okay. So, oh. so, uh, so I introduced myself. Uh, my, my friend, uh, Professor Ravichandran, is actually the chair of the aerospace department at Caltech. That's where the ceremony was being held. And President Kalam was receiving the One Common Award. So he started telling me, I'm also from Trichy. I went to St. Joseph's College. I studied physics. You don't get the feeling that you're talking to the president of the greatest democracy on this planet, right? And that's, you know, that, that's an incredible feeling. I'll never forget that. You talk about leadership. That's a true leader. That's a true leader right there. Because he listened carefully. Uh, and in the space of about five, a uh, whole conversation lasted five minutes, Aravindan. But it's so well imprinted in my mind. We talked about education. We talked about engineering, his background, my teachers, uh, my parents. I mean, we, we covered everything. <laughs> and can you imagine, can you imagine the leader of, you know, one of the greatest democracies on the planet talking to you as if you're a member of his own family? Right. And that feeling, how you make people feel, right? That is so important. That is so important. So President Kalam is amazing. I wish he was here. I wish he was here today. Yeah. Because he, like you, started his acceptance speech with Kurat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that's that's always a lot of uh, inspiration when we look at uh, 
such inspiring personalities also their personal stories right how they have transformed um, and how his passion changes from being a pilot to something so whenever you feel like failures again going back to the failures we could always say okay so this is how people have transformed i think that's that's so wonderful so so many questions on the chat box sir i think i'll i'll start putting it uh, for to you and if you're you're already at uh, 9 10 yeah you could yeah answer them and you could go uh, yeah So the first question is from Sri Ramanarayanan. What inspired you to become what you are today? Yeah. So uh, thank you, uh, sir, for that question. And uh, Sri, even though is it a lady or a? He's he's a boy. Yeah, he's a boy. Yeah. Okay. He's, all right. Very good. Thank he's basically, you. a boy, Mr. Sir. Very good. Very good. Uh, so if you ask me, you know, forty uh, years ago, fifty years ago, if you're going to become a teacher, I said no way, right? Because I've studied engineering. I want to go work on some devices and products and so on. Really, the the experience of being a TA in my first class, I still remember it. And I was expecting to be a TA for a lab in electronics or communication because those are fields that I studied. And instead, I was assigned to be a TA for a programming class. Uh, and of all things, it was a class on PL one, right? You may not even know that language right now. And like most people, I studied Fortran, and Fortran by theory, not even by practice, right? Uh, hadn't actually done coding. So I was shocked uh, when I landed up, and they said, oh, "You're going to be a TA for PL1." So I went to my department head's office and said, "Sir, I've never done PL1." And he was signing some papers. He looked up at me and he said, "You'll figure it out." And I said, "You'll figure it out in solitary." In solitary. So I went out, and it is a large class. It's a sophomore level class, introductory programming, or a noor noor tamil bedroom pang, auditorium style. So I I would go sit in the back of the auditorium. Class on the sabha krama vyala krama on the class meets uh, twice. and my uh, ta session was on friday velligalama so i was sitting in the back of the room uh, listening to the lecture i was literally two lectures ahead of the students right that was probably the toughest assignment i faced because i had to learn and i had to learn in such a way because i felt like you know these people are depending on me so i have to learn it thoroughly right it's one thing to learn it to get an a in the exam we've all done this it's one thing to learn it to get an a in the exam it's another thing to learn it to be able to anticipate what questions you may get and then prepare for those questions and still the questions would come that i had no answers for so that really inspired me that really inspired me and i said this is something that i love doing right uh, understanding and it also taught me humility it taught me humility in a big way uh, and later on you know many years later i was department chair and uh, the area of mid signal circuit design was coming up and my field is you know completely left field communications right and nobody in the department wanted to teach Uh, that field but we had companies like intel and hp in our area and they were saying you need to produce students who are in mixed signal circuit design so i said okay i'll try you know let me try so i taught uh, analog integrated circuits uh, for one semester and at the end of the semester the students actually designed their own chip uh, that they fabricated uh, and nothing great right i mean it could be a two stage op amp but they got, went through the whole process of integrated circuit design and the reason i say that is you know unless you try something you'll never know right so shri absolutely right i mean that's what inspired me to get into teaching and i'm still learning my students are my best teachers that's wonderful sir also um, when you talked about that experience you would have you would like actually you didn't feel that uh, afraid of doing that for the like learning in a very short time and then doing it but then the way you are able to do that and then take learning from that was was so much inspiring thank you thank you for sharing that sir i don't know if i can share one quick analogy because we asked about hobbies so cricket learner they'll say focus on the ball right don't focus on the situation so always always eyes on the ball eyes on the ball don't worry about who's bowling or what they're doing but focus on the ball at all times so that's the same idea yeah the exact follow up question to this sir from felsi judit uh today students are having many thoughts but when they are trying to focus on one area they are finding it so difficult <laughs> so so now you have told us the analogy sir you need to explain us to do that how how do we do that do we do we need to do that pre practice of uh, focusing for um, time or do we need to do some spiritual practice what is your routine how do we do, how do you do that so one of the habits you know it sounds crazy right now but when i was growing up you know my my father used to say write a diary right so so every day i would write uh, for example you know if i studied something from this time to this time and then he would ask me to uh, at the end of the week or end of the month he'd look at it and he'd give these little symbols you know vg e g f and so on so i didn't know what they were 
So VG na very good, E is excellent, F is fair, and so forth. So what he was trying to do was uh, inspire me to say, okay, you need to track what you're doing on a daily basis. By the way, I remember this continued even all the way through college. Okay, so when I went to Arjun Trichy, so one on one I had to write this in a diary and send it back to him. <laughs> oh. And then he would deposit this into a savings and the savings account. And in a written and in the SBI, I have a savings account sitting there. Uh, even though I've lost my father, you know, but he he put money in there. But the idea was, you need to stay focused. So back to Felsi's question, uh, there are so many thoughts crossing your mind, but you have to be in the moment, right? So what is the most important thing? What can I do right now, as far as that is concerned? And then focus your attention on that. Don't worry about the consequences. You know, you have no control over the consequences. What you have control over is your actions. You know how you prepare for it, how you act on it. and how you are able to support the people around you so if you start worrying about is anadakamo or anadakamo you know you start worrying about all the things that might happen in the end you end up with inertia right so you have to be prepared document what you do and continue to push forward in the belief that good things will happen if you focus right nothing ever comes easy nothing ever comes easy right uh, when you see the ultimate result when you see a paper a person i mean your award when you got the teach for india award i know the number of hours that you put in that you continue to put in to make that a reality right so focus is just all about exactly that you know looking at what you care about putting in the hard hours putting in the energy and then understanding that there are lessons to be learned even when things don't go your way a lot of times they don't go your way <laughs> so. that's true sir that's true yeah i think think you don't think no not to think about consequences but then doing the action is i think i would say it's equal into more like doing a meditation or like being in the moment right i think um, thank you for sharing that it's it's one of the ipo vandu paatha it's one of the top required skills and mari aidichi being able to focus for a longer amount of time especially given that we are seeing so much of social media so much of way to distract um, so much of distractions around us so that's um, very 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 essential yeah thank you for sharing that sir uh so i'm going to skip over a few questions this this question from gloria miller if i could summarize it uh, i'm sure you will also be able to see that sir but um i think this is more from the perspective of public schools in us uh this so her thoughts are like teachers are overpaid and the students are underserved um she's also saying some examples and we should hire colored ministers okay i think this is for for people in india this might be a different context altogether but i want to uh, put you forth ask you this if you want to have any thoughts around this so um, uh, thank you gloria for that question and again you know when i think about education and i've shared this uh, uh, with with the audience uh, the teachers in the world are responsible for who we are today right they took in care about us as individuals and yes we have a lot of challenges in the united states uh, the program that i uh, have led for the last 10 years the aim squared program uh, brings a lot of first generation students who come from impoverished neighborhoods underserved neighborhoods and i would say minoritized not minority minoritized neighborhoods because they have not had the same opportunities that others have had but all that said uh, i see tremendous will power here Uh, for the teachers that i work with you know one of the programs that we just completed we uh, supported uh, 10 teachers this is uh, to earn credentials single subject credentials uh, it turned out that all of them were women uh, to earn stem credentials this is part of the aim squared program and they're all going to go work in inner city schools uh, to inspire others in stem disciplines not engineering maybe biology maybe physics maybe chemistry so i think we need to continue to do that you know there is a, a teach for america program you know that's important you know clearly with the, the current focus on community colleges here in the us that is happening as well uh, there is always room for improvement right we cannot look at a bad example and say well you know something has to change right we we have to look at ways in which we can change that and you know as mahatma gandhi say become the change you wish to be right So if you see something that is not working the IEEE for example has a tremendous pre-university program K12 program if you go to try engineering you have lesson plans for K12 teachers parents students and so forth all of that can be used all that said uh, the key is 
to provide opportunities because in this day and age, there is absolutely no excuse for anyone to say that education is only for the privileged. Education should be for every single person because that is absolutely key to solving the grand challenges before us. It's absolutely key to making a better per person ultimately. You know, earlier, uh, Aravindan asked me about leadership and I say, you know, leadership is about care. It's about being collaborative. It's being accountable. It's being resilient and being ethical. Yes, there are a lot of challenges. Yes, there will continue to be new challenges, but we need to hold our heads high. You know, as Maya Angelou said, lift up your hearts. Each new hour brings new beginnings. And I'm confident, you know, I'm the eternal optimist, you can tell. I'm the eternal optimist. I believe in the power of humanity. I believe in advancing technology for humanity. I believe in the teachers that I've had. I'm, I'm still in touch with a lot of those teachers. You know, without those teachers, I wouldn't be here. So uh, as uh, one of my colleagues would say, let's stop admiring the problem. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work, right? So if the public schools are a challenge, let's jump in. Let's do Teach for India. Let's do Teach for America. Let's do what we can individually to make the difference. So I hope I did justice to that question. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. And I personally had an opportunity to visit a school in the US when I was visiting Atlanta. Uh, yeah, Teach for India, Teach for America intervened uh, classroom. It was a different experience and I looked at the cultural differences, right? The challenges that we, they face, the US, the, they, face, they still face challenges. So we always think like, okay, so they have solved, solved all the problems, but it was a very different context altogether. And it gave me a whole new understanding. Thank you for sharing that. And also, it's also important to jump up and solve the problems that we find uh, yeah. challenging. Yeah, that's when we actually can deep dive and then trying to uh, come up with a possible solution. Yeah. So next question is a technical one, sir. Um, is it good to pursue a signal processing domain based on masters abroad and move towards research? And is signal processing domain fading due to advancements in deep learning based algorithms? Uh, this question is from Neville and I also want, wanted to add one more point to this. In general, uh, apart from signal processing, we also see an um, advantage or pros in doing a master's uh, in abroad because uh, you have um, like you have experienced that and have you seen any pros, um, advantages of doing that? If you could also add that, it will be helpful. Yeah. Great question, Neville. Thank you very much. So uh, let, me, let me address the technical aspect first, right? So you're talking about uh, signal processing. And, and you know, should should I transition that to uh, fields like AI and so forth? Uh, I'm a big believer in systems thinking, systems level thinking, and I believe that that's going to become more important in the days ahead. So, regardless of the discipline you're in, you know, think about 3D printing, manufacturing, uh, Internet of Things, sensors, robotics, and so forth. You see all a lot of these technologies coming together to solve problems. Maybe in healthcare, right? Maybe in implanted devices. Maybe in prosthetics maybe in the field of renewable energy, where we are looking at sustainability, uh, maybe in eradicating hunger and poverty. Right? So all of these things will come to bear in different scenarios based on the challenges that you confront. So I'd say rather than get fixated on one discipline in particular, signal processing, I think, is, is a good discipline in the sense it sharpens your analytical, critical thinking skills. You can apply it in almost any field. You could apply it in finance. You know, a lot of the people who went to school with me, who did particularly well in signal processing, by the way, have turned out to be financial experts. They moved on to management and they run companies and they do different things now. So the idea is, how do you build this foundation? And I believe you have to be a systems thinker, right? So a systems thinker is looking at the boundaries between the field. So the biggest uh, challenge that I see right now is the boundary between, say, biology and engineering, because that, I think, is at, at the new frontier. And as I shared with you at the beginning with the National Academy of Engineering, uh, no profession unleashes the spirit of engineering. No profession connects science to life in so many forward thinking ways. So the second part of your question is, uh, you know, should we be looking at uh, pursuing a master's abroad and so forth? I believe a big part of the education is interacting with people with different cultures, uh, interacting with uh, different communities, because you learn a lot when you interact with them. These are things that you cannot learn in the classroom. Now, other than just mentioned being in a classroom in Atlanta, I'm sure that opened his eyes in ways that he would not have understood had he seen a video, had he read a book. But being in the classroom, being there and experiencing that, that's totally different. So in that respect, I think face-to-face -face has its value. 
yes, we're trying very hard to replicate face-to-face -face and interactive settings using spatial chat and StreamYard and all kinds of different platforms. But at the end of the day, as human beings, I think we believe in community and we want to connect with each other. So more than the technical field that you're studying, the, the biggest takeaway for me in studying abroad, you know, not just in the United States, you know, I'm talking about students from the US studying in India and so forth uh, through Fulbright uh, scholarships. The idea of community so that you learn from the community around you, that's perhaps um, you know, invaluable in my mind. You know, that I, I, I can never express my gratitude for all the experiences that I've had, right? I mean, a few years back, I went to Carbondale, Illinois, where I had my graduate studies. One of my professors there, uh, he is, at the time, he was probably in his late 80s. Now he's in his 90s. And he drove up about 50 miles for that reunion just to have lunch, right? And uh, I still think about the conversations in his office. We'd go sit in his office and literally talk about it at that time. I, I remember this distinctly, 1986, when we had the spatial disaster, right? January of 1986. Uh, Krista McAuliffe was one of the teachers who went up there. And within minutes after takeoff, you may have all read about this in history, O-ring failure in Jolita. As soon as the space shuttle went up, it exploded. And I remember being there in his uh, office at that time, talking to him and having those conversations. But the point I'm making to you is that uh, studying abroad, the value is the engagement. The value is learning about culture, learning about communities, because we hear a lot about diversity and inclusion right now, right? And diversity and inclusion in particular, I think can be improved when you understand the point of view. You may not agree with certain points of view, but you understand, you respect different points of view and you believe that in order for us to move forward, we all have to work together. We have to be collaborative. Right? So these are some things that you can never learn from a textbook or never learn from uh, taking online classes uh, as much as they try to do community. So that's probably the biggest advantage. So uh, back to your question, signal processing is probably going to be there. It's going to morph into different fields, uh, maybe in medicine and biology. Take a look at the quantum initiative, right? Take a look at what IEEE is doing with the quantum initiative, quantum computing. Signal processing, again, is a big part of that. Uh, IEEE is about to launch an academy right now. Uh, AI, IoT, and smart grid are the three areas. And the academy is such that you can take whatever you want. If you're an advanced user, you can go and take an advanced course. But you can take it from your perspective. If you're an industry person, you can take it. If you're a student, you can take it. If you're a teacher, you can look at it. So you can pretty much customize what you want and learn from that. So I see all of that happening in education going forward, making it more affordable, making it more accessible. And hopefully by 2022, we'll be back to some level of face-to-face -face interaction. Right? Looking forward to that, sir. Some level of face-to-face, -face, yes. <laughs> so yeah, um, sir, I, I'm going to post this as a final question because of the time. And this is from Ashwin. And this is something that all of us need, especially the young professionals need, right? How do you manage your personal and professional life? Um, so your thoughts, some of your uh, practices that will help you in this process. Great question, Ashwin. Thank you again for uh, the question and the comments. Uh, to me, it's a blend. You know, sometimes it's say like, IEEE is my family, and it's true, right? I've gotten to know volunteers and members around the world, thanks to IEEE. And they become closer to me. Uh, I consider them as part of my family. But yes, it's important to detach. It's important to, you know, I love listening to music, all kinds of music. You know, uh, I listen to classical rock, you know, Tamil, English, and so forth. And my uh, my children have introduced me to rap. Okay, so yes, I listen to rap as well. <laughs> so uh, there's just different uh, things that I do. Um, and uh, uh, as far as um, balance, uh, it, it is just being thankful for the things you have and knowing that, you know, things can change very quickly. Just like if you don't do, pay attention to that cricket ball, you know, you could turn around and find yourself uh, out, right? All it takes is one ball or all it takes is that one ball to be hit to you. So you need to be prepared and uh, balance the things that you do uh, carefully and never forget family, right? Family to me, I think this is the most important thing. Without family, None of us would be here today. So uh, celebrate your family, celebrate your friends, uh, because they'll be there forever, right? They'll be there forever to support you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, sir. I think um, that was that was a wonderful conversation. 
ஒரு விநாயகர் சதுர்த்தி அன்னைக்கு ஒரு நிறைய ஒரு இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் தாட்ஸ் இன்ஸ்பைரிங் தாட்ஸ் ஆக்சுவலா இந்த வீடியோ திரும்ப நானே யூடியூப்ல வந்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் நானே போய் இருந்தது பார்ப்பேன் டு ப்ராபப்ளி பிகாஸ் ஐ வாஸ் ஆல்சோ ஸ்விச்சிங் அண்ட் மல்டிபிள் திங்ஸ் ஐ குட் ஃபோக்கஸ் அண்ட் Um, and there's so much of learning there's so much of things that i have personally taking back i'm sure the audience will also be taking back a lot of things and we wish you all the very best um, with all the professional uh, your your professional aspirations and also uh, we wish you um uh, vinayaka sadhuti also in this opportunity and kanne kanne my regards to your family sir it's it is such a honor to have you here on this special occasion with all of us thank you so much aravind and thank you to the audience and and, and really very uh, thoughtful questions i don't know that i did justice to the questions but I, it was just stream of consciousness you know this is who i am you know uh, what you have is uh, what you see is what you have right and uh, be safe be healthy uh, most importantly believe in yourself be authentic you know if there's one word you want to take away from this entire conversation today be true to yourself be true to the people in your community be true to your family and be compassionate right and i think uh, at the end of the day uh, you can uh, you know you, you'll find yourself doing things that you never believed you could right i've often said you know start by doing you know what is necessary then you do what is possible and soon you find yourself doing the impossible it was actually saint francis of assisi but it also could be engineering right you start by doing something your design doesn't work then your professor says no go back to the drawing board <laughs> try try different things and so on. so everybody thank you so much iniya uh, vinay vinay chaturthi vaalthukal ungalku i have the whole day ahead of me so i'm going to celebrate <laughs> yes sir have my happy uh, i look forward to seeing all of you in person very soon thank you so much aravindan great thank you sir. you you told us a uh, one word actually uh, kripa karan sir has joined and he's saying two things one is compassion for people and then the other is servant being a servant as a leader right you are the leadership style which you spoke about Um, thank you kripa <laughs> yes sir thank you so much sir look forward to seeing you sometime again soon um and take care and have a great day everyone take care it's been wonderful being on the show bye <laughs>